another professional video about little life stories. Now this one's titled Old Fireball. This is ni this is 19 by the way. I've done 19 of these. I should I, I should I should give a coupons or something, shouldn't I? If somebody's actually watched all 19? What could I do? Something. We need to think about that, okay? Some kind of a reward for, people, for, for anyone who's actually subjected themselves to all of these. I, I think there should be a reward. Speaking of coupons, and this is going to be off the side. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing. I, this is me bouncing around, okay? This is me not, okay, I'll quit that. It's not an earthquake. It's me not keeping my hands off of the keyboard while I'm making a professional video. But since I mentioned uh, coupons, you know who doesn't give coupons? Doctors. Mm -hmm. Have you ever got a coupon? Has anybody ever got a coupon from a doctor? Nope. I mean, I'm a frequent flyer. And not once has anybody said, thank you for coming in, Mr. Thomas, and by the way, next time you come in, we're going to give you 20% off. Anything that we operate on and we can get in this bag is going to be half price. Of course, I guess you'd want to be kind of careful on that one. But I mean, really, if you fly a lot, the airlines, they're going bankrupt and will give you frequent flyer miles. And doctors, nothing. It's like, uh, you know, you've had a, you've had kidney, you've had, uh, you know, kidney removed, you've had heart surgery, you've had, you know, joints repaired. Uh, you know, they like to throw in, you know, by the way, next week, why don't you come on down to the office and we'll take off, oh, I don't know, half a dozen moles or something. I really have wandered here. I've just, this is, this is two minutes of your life you're never going to get back. Um, what was the story about? Old Fireball. Yes. I had, uh, years ago, uh, our, my first ride mower was a Craftsman. It had about a little 12 and a half horsepower ride mower. Yeah, it was a good mower. I loved that mower. It was it was great. It hung in there through thick and thin, and uh, a lot of actually with my lawn it was probably more thin than thick, but it was tall thin. Um, I think we purchased that in '91, and held it used it hard. It held on for a long time. Went through a couple of batteries. I think the starter motor went out once, but other than that, you know, really didn't have any too much trouble with it. Towards towards the end of its existence, it started uh, leaking oil. And the way it leaked oil was right on, you know, right around where the muffler was at. So it smoked a lot uh, because of where the uh, oil uh, leaked. So I, I got in a habit when I pull it into our big shed, uh, not to be confused with the little shed, the big shed with the double doors. Here, I'll do the double doors, see? Double doors. Boy, you just don't get this kind of stuff on, on regular TV. I'm going to try for the first take again on this, huh? Okay. That was a disembodied voice of Hun. So anyway, I'd pull it into the big shed, and then uh, I, I I got in a habit. I don't know where I got in a habit from. It might have been something Dad told me. It might have been something I picked up in the service. I have no idea. But I got in the habit of when I turned off a mo turned off an engine, uh, I put the full turn it off and shove the choke on, just shove the choke way up there, and uh, kind of threw a little unburned gas in there. And I went and, uh, on this particular occasion, it was, I think it was early spring, and I had started mowing a little bit later than that I was used to in, in, the, in the evening. And so I was really rushing around, and I was in and up actually having to use the headlights that were on it. And uh, it, it, But as it turned out, it was really a, a good thing that it was dark when I finished up. And uh, I should do this just as a quick sidebar. My first car was a 59 Chevy Biscayne, six-cylinder. This was, it was not a, <laughs> it was, did not have one of the big engines. And uh, I had learned, again, for some strange reason, and kids don't try this at home, that if you were driving down the highway, like, at, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning, and you're doing like 50 or 60, if you, if you turned the car off, just turned the ignition off, see, the wheels didn't lock up on you in those days. You know, you could turn the ignition off and everything still, you could still steer it, everything was fine. Um, <laughs> if you went a little ways like that as the engine just kind of let it pull down when you turn the key back on made a huge bang because it ignited all that unburned gas that was in the uh, you know that you'd gone into the exhaust system in those days 
uh, the interesting thing is I, I, I never did really explain to Dad how come that muffler was blown off of the car. Uh, I, I really didn't have a good explanation. It was just like, don't know, Dad, just fell off. Must have been old. So anyway, uh, I was pulling, uh, I pulled the mower into the shed, and I had just, uh, just closing the doors up. And just as I got those doors almost shut through the door in that darkened shed, I could saw this little tiny glow. Kind of closed the doors, and I thought, glow. You know, they're, they're, well, number one, there's no electricity to the shed, so it's not like I'd left a light on. And then that, that word jumped into my mind, fire. Fire. Threw open the shed doors, and the little glow was coming from the, uh, from the moor around the engine. And, uh, Ran over the moor and I threw the shroud back. A little something about fire. It needs oxygen. So uh, now I had a bigger fire because uh, not cleaning the engine very often. I meant I had a lot of buildup of grass cuttings and oil, and uh, so this this was what I thought to do. This was this was my first plan of attack here. I tried to blow out the fire. I bent my face down real close. This is me getting real close. <laughs> Hope I didn't spit up anything on the screen there. Um, so I was trying to blow the fire out, but this method also works if you're trying to start a campfire. From if you know you remember your your camping days, uh, this method was not being real successful. So I thought, uh, well, I'll go ahead and try a couple more times because I can almost get it out. But you see, the oil away was feeding it. I mean, it had plenty of fuel there, so it, as soon as I'd take a breath, you know, fortunately away from the fire, it would it would fire back up again. Well, that second time I went down when I was when I was blowing on that tank, I happened to look up to my left, and of course, here's the gas tank, just sitting right here. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, as this fire's coming back, this is probably not the best place in the world to have my face. So. Uh, I, 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 I brought a halt to the extend, extinguishing the fire with a mighty wind method. And uh, it was actually a good enough fire. I, I could actually see inside the shed uh, pretty good. I, you know, I realized at this point I, I really didn't have any time for too many more missteps here. I remember the service, uh, we was in those old wooden barracks, and they always drummed in to us that the entire barracks could be consumed in flames in two and a half minutes. So uh, I, I, I thought, well, if I run to the house, you know, th now this is how guys figure things out. I'm thinking if I run to the house and, like, call the fire department or something or try to grab something else, this, they're going to be too late. The shed and all the stuff inside is going to be gone. Just, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be on fire. And then, of course, uh, you know, it leads to the inevitable questions. Well, gosh, Mr. Thomas, how did the uh, shed catch on fire? Well, I, I parked a flaming lawnmower inside of it. So anyway, uh, I, I don't know why it, it occurred to me, but I thought at this point, shoving the moor out of the shed seemed like about the only option that I had. And uh, the only problem with that is it was pulled in, of course, front end first, and I couldn't really uh, pull it out the back. Uh, for some reason, I can't remember why I couldn't do that, so I thought my best ch chance of getting it was to be shoving it from the front. Again, this is how guys figure things out. So uh, anyway, I was able, the flames hadn't got too bad. I was able to kind of, I squeezed around and I got in front of the moor. You know, and it was after I got in front of the moor, it occurred to me that when I had done this in the past, shoved the moor out because the gears stuck or something, that about half the time it hung up on the door. So I'm thinking, okay, well now I'm inside the shed with a moor that's on fire. And, you know, you can almost see the headlines already, you know, man, <laughs> man trapped self in a shed with flaming lawnmower, you know, and then there would be the inevitable interviews with the widow afterwards, you know. I don't know why he did it. He had so much to live for. I don't know why he'd burn himself up in the shed. There's just no explaining it. But, you know, he was he did things like that. Um, so anyway, decided to give it the mighty heave. And uh, I got to tell you, doing that, I, I was thinking... Uh, that, that had to be pretty inspiring if you were standing outside the shed and see this flaming lawnmower shooting shooting out of the shed. 
probably wouldn't have been as, as exciting as seeing a man jump over a flaming moor uh, out of the shed, but uh, I, I preferred the way that it actually went. And uh, anyway, the, so the moor got out of the shed, and it's out there in the backyard. It's, it's, just, it's burning nicely. It's in a good spot, uh, not where it should be catching anything else on fire. Now, I'm running up to the water faucet. It's on the back of the house. And remember, this is early spring, and it occurred to me as I was uh, just about to get to the faucet, I didn't have any hoses out yet. So now, okay, well, there goes my, uh, there's my plan to, you know, use a garden hose to douse the flames. So I'm looking around, looking around. Here's a big pot. Oh, great, I've got a big pot. So anyway, I'm standing there, and of course, I did, I'm holding this, because it's up high, since it's at the back of the house, I'm, uh, or we got to walk out basement, so the faucet's up higher. So I'm trying to hold this big pot I've got this big pot in front of me, and I turn on the water and, of course, shoot myself in the face. And finally managed to get it. <laughs> Go running across the backyard again, and, and I, I dump this big pot of water on the fire, which, of course, doesn't put it out the first pot. And, uh... <laughs> I go, uh, I go running back up again. I think it took me uh, actually two more times to uh, get the fire extinguished. You know, and, and I'm looking around, and all this is going on. You know, it's it's like ah, there's nobody around. I I, I can see my father-in-law, Dad. He's up there in the window, and he's he's reading his paper. You know, and it's just like a, you know, it's like a little Norman Rockwell painting, and there's just all this drama is going on in the backyard. Me running around, flaming moors, carrying uh, uh, <laughs> carrying buckets well, big pots of water, and dumping them on the lawnmower. And uh, so anyway, uh, I finally get the <laughs> get the get the fire put out, and uh, go run it inside. And I'm just like, oh, how are you doing the fire for fire catch? And to get that little high voice, I'm trying to tell uh, Shelly everything that's been going on because I'm still, uh, you know, still on that adrenaline high. You know, still got that rush of all this drama that's gone on. So anyway, fire's out. Leave the more. Check it a few more times. Make sure that it's completely out. I call Shelly from work the next day, and I, <laughs> I try to talk her into going out and starting the more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she hung up on me. I think you did hang up on me that day. No, I never. I think you hung up on me because you you said I was wanted to know if you I thought you was as crazy as I was, uh, trying to get you killed. Anyway, uh, she claims that she didn't hang up on me. I think she did. She really did. So anyway, uh, so when I get home from work, go into the backyard, and we're sitting out there, and I really I, I just couldn't leave it out there. Just that's just a little too Arkansas for me. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to do something with it. So walked up to the moor, and uh, it 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 really looked pretty good, and. Uh, because the shroud had come back down when after I when I was throwing all the water on it, no paint was burned off. The motor was actually clean. Probably the first time it's been motor been clean since I bought the thing. And uh, you know I got on that more and turned on and that baby fired right up. Started first time and uh, it went on and, and it ran for uh, a couple more years after that and. Uh, I finally gave it to a guy that fixed moors and said, no, you can just have it. And, and uh, I think it's to this very day, I think it uh, is still out there. So how this was, this was 14 minutes. 14 minutes you spent. I hope it was worth your time.